Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, we're going to be getting into a very interesting broadcast this evening. Of course, the picture that you see on your screen here, I just kind of grabbed this real quick, random there, talking about the Nephilim. Uh, but we're actually going to be talking about this from biblical passages uh, I wanted to share with you. And of course, reminder uh, for you, uh, let's take, in fact, I didn't actually put that scripture up as of yet, but let me take you to Matthew 24. Uh, and because I want to get into the discussion here, I'm actually going to be discussing the Lord's Prayer for one, but my computer is a little slow in responding to everything here. So please bear with me here. Um, biblical teaching, but of things that we are facing here in these last days. And it has a lot to do with the Lord's Prayer, something that I gleaned from the uh, um, many or from, from the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, that I think you'll find very interesting. We already know all the different ones. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which are, be in Judea and flee into the mountains. Let him which is in the housetop come down and take take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. You know what's interesting? Have you ever noticed that right there, and I just, I didn't plan on stopping on verse 15 there. The abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, Jesus is actually applying to 70 AD. Well, I'm so, most people probably say, oh no, see, that can't be the case. That can't be the case. Well, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls talks about the 70 of weeks that Daniel speaks about. And it actually has a different outlook, a different meaning, you might say, than what we typically think. I haven't had a chance to go into that, but I have to go into that later. Uh, I, I'm really still searching that out. I want to share some of that with you guys. But, you know, as, as I also, as I, we know that, you know, there's wars, rumors of wars, things like that, that are going to take place, earthquakes in diverse places. And we're seeing all kinds of earthquakes and things in diverse places. All you got to do is turn on. Uh, you know, the USGS thing, go to the largest magnitude, just had a 5.8 there and wherever it is close over there, I guess to Haiti or Puerto Rico or one of those places there. We And as I've told you guys before, we're going to be seeing 8.0 and greater as the year comes uh, to a close here. That's what government scientists are speaking about right now. Uh, you know, then we've also got three volcanoes erupting simultaneously off the Alaskan island chain. You got the undersea volcano. And as I shared with you guys a couple of months ago on Patreon, uh, those volcanoes under the ocean are going off globally right now. And nobody seems to be paying attention. Right. But here's the thing that's concerning to me. Right. We get down. What is it? Verse 36. But heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away, pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. I know it's, it's very controversial when I say this, but when it talks about the angels of heaven, uh, that could be suggestive. That could also be the fallen angels, because as Paul speaks about, we wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. He actually uses the word heavens. All right. Heavens. And uh, that is archons, by the way, that he's talking about, because it's also the correct translation that he talks about when he talks about this battle that we are facing. But Jesus goes on to say in verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Wow. So what were they eating and drinking? Of course, it was cannibalism. It was drinking human blood, eating human flesh. And of course, the marrying and giving in marriage was not just because of immorality. It was the uh, hybridization of the human race, the true godly line of children here. And Jesus even tells us about that in his famous parable when he talks about the enemy came and they sowed tares, literally in the Hebrew Matthew, upon the wheat intermingled their seed, just like what we saw in the case of the book of Ezra when the Kohanim priests, the leaders of the Kohanim, actually went and mingled the holy seed with those people of the nations. And no, it wasn't Babylonians. It was the Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Amorites, Amalekites, those, uh, those Nephilim bloodlines that were living in Israel back during the days that Israel actually came and took that land 
back years ago. Now, here's where we're going to go, though. I just wanted to kind of set the stage for you because there is all kinds of hybridization that is going on. And one of the disclosures I'm going to be doing over on Patreon is exactly that information. I'm going to be discussing that here in the next day or so. We're going to be talking about the hybridization that's been going on that the government is fully aware of and how that they are hybridizing and also cloning. And many of your world leaders are nothing more than clones of the real people that once existed. And I do know that Bill Clinton and uh, Vladimir Putin are two of those that are actually clones and not the real people. That might shock you, but that is something we'll discuss over on Patreon. Now, let's go to the Lord's Prayer because I discovered something in the Dead Sea Scrolls that really caught my attention and I kind of want to go over, I, I've, I've dealt with the Lord's Prayer before, many, many years ago, in fact. In fact, let's just see if I can actually find that, uh, because that was something that, it's been taught by a lot of teachers since then. Some teachers kind of put that out there, and they make it look like it's uh, their own revelation, but I, I know that... Uh, I know that they actually got it from me because some of those ministers I actually talked to directly. Uh, this was the original video I did on, on it. Uh, the Lord's Prayer reveals the return of the house of Israel. Now, there is one correction I would have to make from this initial video. That's back when I didn't have a beard. September 2nd, 2011. All right. That's when I first. I think we're all this. aware by the news media coverage that Israel is constant. Okay, this is where I talk about the Lord's Prayer back in 2011 on September the 2nd and how that it shows the return of the house of Israel. I take it from Ezekiel's prophecy. I'm going to go into that in just a little bit. I'm going to kind of update you on that and make the correction that I should have done years ago, but just by the grace of God, I hadn't grown that far into it yet. But let's first look at this, this prayer again. After this manner, they ask him, how do they pray? After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I can tell you something, friends, that might just blow you away. But that entire prayer has everything to do with the full restoration of Israel, which sanctifies God's holy name. And I look at Ihaye as being the true holy name, the I am, as Jesus said. Um, but we'll leave that at that. And Give us this day our daily bread, which is Christ. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What debts? Most people would translate that as sins, but it doesn't say sins in the Greek language. It is debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What evil? What temptation? As Jesus said, as it was in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, so shall it be. Excuse me. I'm sorry, as he goes back over there in Matthew 24, and he talks about as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and giving and giving in marriage. It's temptation that's coming on the earth. This, this demonic fallen angel agenda that's going to repeat in the last day. I think it has a lot to do with that. And that has a lot to do with even forgiving us our debts. Going to get into that in just a moment. Before I get into the debt, so let's go back to the part, the prophecy about hallowed be thy name. Actually, that means to sanctify your name. How did God, how did one, how did his name become unsanctified, right? Ezekiel, I believe it's in Ezekiel. Let me just double check. I think it's Ezekiel chapter 36, I believe it is. Yep, Ezekiel chapter 36. God's name becomes profaned because of the house of Israel. It says, verse 17, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their way and by their doings. Their way before me was as the uncleanness of a woman in her impurity. What was it that the house of Israel was doing? They were doing exactly what the house of Judah did when they were in Babylon. They were intermingling amongst the Nephilim bloodline. That's why it talks about the uncleanliness of a woman in her impurity. Wherefore, I poured out my fury upon them for the blood which they had shed upon the land, and because they had 
defiled it with their idols. And I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And when they come, came unto the nations, whether they came, they profaned my holy name. And that men said of them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land as if God couldn't keep his own promise. All right. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations, whether they came. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations, whether you came. And I will sanctify my great name, which hath been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of the countries and, and will bring you into your own land. Okay, and will sprinkle you with clean water upon you and you shall be clean from your uncleanliness and from your idols will I cleanse you. When was that fulfilled? Acts chapter 2. And as we know, wow. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in Acts chapter 20. That's a different scripture. I didn't put Acts chapter 2 up, I don't think, but I'm going to put it up right now. All right. So when was that fulfilled? That was fulfilled clearly in the book of Acts. And we will go, oh, I didn't get the right book yet. That's why I say the computer's a little slow. Let's see, let's see if we can get it over here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Jeez, that's so frustrating. Here we go. Acts chapter 2. There we go. And we're going to go down to verse. Well, first off, he said he's going to bring them back to their own land. Now remember, the Greek says they translated Jews, but it says Judeans. Right. And they uh, and, and, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. That's the house of Judah in the upper room. One hundred and twenty. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Judeans, not Jews, Judeans, devout men out of every nation under heaven. What did God promise in Ezekiel 37 or 36 in order to sanctify his great name? He said, I will bring you back, O house of Israel. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Judeans devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Perithians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, uh, Phrygia, uh, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews of proselytes, Cretes, Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, who were they? You get down to verse 36, you find out. First, yeah, verse 36. Now watch what it says, verse 34 to 36. For David has not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, thou sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all what? The house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. No wonder why Jesus said, except that you believe that I am, Ihaye, you will die in your sin. The house of Israel had come home and the first part of the prayer of Jesus was being fulfilled because what was he telling his apostles when they asked how to pray? He said, tell them to pray like this. Our father, which art in heaven, basically not the word hallowed, but sanctify, sanctify your name. Your kingdom come. Your will will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Wow. So the Give us this day our daily bread. That giving of the bread would be Christ that would be given. And of course, we saw that on Passover as he was the Paschal lamb. He was that lamb. It wasn't, no, he didn't go get a lamb and they brought a lamb in and slaughtered the lamb and everybody ate the lamb. No, if they did that, if they didn't eat the bread, they would have actually rejected Jesus Christ as the lamb of God. But they didn't. So his name was hallowed 
when he kept that promise that was made to Ezekiel and he brought them from among the nations and gathered you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land and I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. And what did they say? Here's what's interesting. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. Wow. Did he do it? What did they say? What happened after this? And then they went on to say, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you, to your children, to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words that he testified and exhorted, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Ooh, untoward generation. Wow, a bunch of flipping demons were in there. Then they were, they were gladly received his word were what? Baptized. There is the sprinkling of the water. There is the house of Israel. They have come home. First part of the Lord's prayer has been fulfilled. Second part, giving us our daily bread. Christ was the daily bread, was fulfilled. Now, and forgive us our debts. What debts is he talking about? Well, oddly enough, let's see if this is the one where I got it. I got to figure out which book it is in. Just give me one moment. Um, I got so many Dead Sea Scrolls in front of me. Here we go right here. This is in the fragment 4Q534. All right, now, I got to make sure you guys can see this. So I'm going to turn on the camera so I know that you can see it. All right. Oh. All right. Whoop. There you go. Whoop. Crooked. Yeah. That's the Hebrew version of that fragment. Now, let me see if I can slide it over to the English side. There we go. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that, but I just want you to be able to see so you don't just think I'm just making something up here. In this fragment, it says, and the enclosures will be rebuilt as that of the watchers will be his work. What? The watchers? Are you serious? And they will establish its foundation upon it. It's sin. It's debt instead of a curse. Do you realize even the scholars that came across this referenced the debt when the earth was rebuilt and reformed by these watchers was placed upon mankind? The debt was placed there. That's in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I know that may sound a little bit wacky to say that, all right? But the thing is, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We normally think it's our sins. And you could apply it that way. But there was a debt over mankind because why? We are trapped in a body of flesh. We are, we are here. And as we know from all the, all the different writings, whether it be prophecies in the Old Testament, as Abraham said, this is not his home. He was a pilgrim and a stranger in a strange land. Jesus, when his apostles wanted to go with him, he said, well, then take up your cross and follow me. Escaping this body and leaving this world is your way out. So lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. That's because, as we know, Jesus speaks about in Matthew 24, that what happened before the Andalusian destruction is going to happen again. Now, I know that when I get into talking about things and I start talking about fallen angels and those type things that are happening on the earth and giving you inside information over on Patreon, disclosures that I, I share with you about how the government works with these entities, even this quote unquote, hmm, we won't call it there, but you know, the little thing that they stick in everybody's arm or wants to stick in everybody's arm is part of that agenda. That is actually fallen angel technology to connect you to the AI system. But I want to share something with you as well from the Dead Sea Scrolls in fragment 4Q535. I think it's the one I want to share with you. Let me just see. Nope, that's not the one. Hey, hey let, me, let me find the right one here. I uh, sure hope I did not lose this. Um, 
is to show you that there was a technology amongst these fallen angels even back before the flood. Um, and it's where they're going. Yeah, here we go. I think I got it now. Yes, here it is. This is in fragment 4Q531. It says, in one of the tablets, the duration of the giants, there's a blank space, like the hurricane, he flew with his hands like an eagle. The earth and crossed over bare regions, the great desert. And he saw Enoch and he called him and said to him, and then he goes into the things he's going to say to him, together with all the Nephilim of the earth, he, if he removes it. Okay. The point is that I want to show you is that the technology of flight crossing huge expansions and said he went like a hurricane and flew like with his hands like an eagle out. What type of aircraft was this fallen angel in? All right. So don't be surprised. There's little bits and pieces like that hidden in these Dead Sea Scrolls. And I know for a fact that our government through the CIA actually works on ancient documents, some of those which are considered classified and not even disclosed. You don't even get to see them. Just like the Dead Sea Scrolls, you only get to see about 50% of what was really written there. They won't release it. And the Vatican actually controls most of that. So we are living in a very strange time. Now let's just, real quickly, as we're going to close this up here in just a few minutes here, let me share some other scriptures with you. Remember what it says in Acts chapter 20. Paul says here, right? Verse 26. Wherefore, I take you to record this day, I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the, all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's the debt being paid. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Trying to take you back underneath that curse. By the way, the curse is the law. The Bible says it. When you see the, the, the push in this day here to put people back under Judaic law and under Hebraic rabbis, Jewish rabbis, underneath the law, you're going back under the curse. Also, of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. All right. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter two. saying, I will declare thy name unto thy brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praise unto you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. What is the bondage? It's the very body we live in. Our flesh is a grave. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to, make, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. The debt has been paid. We have been indebted because of this filthy flesh that we are in. Ephesians also, chapter 6, we read, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not, as I said earlier, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That high places is heavens. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to do to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
Think about that. To stand, withstand what? The evil day. What does the Lord's Prayer say? And let us not, uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? In the book of Jude, for certain men crept in unawares who were before ordained of old this condemnation, godly men turning the grace of our Lord God, our grace of our God into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I will there put, put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left, left their own habitation, he hath reserved into everlasting chains under darkness and to the judgment of the great day. Even Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, set forth for an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. All right? Now, notice so. I think there's one part I forgot to tell you about. Let me just get it right. Okay. Yeah, no, no, we read it. For certain men crept in unawares. They were old, ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. There's your Nephilim. There's your fallen angels. Once again. Because he tells you that who they were but they were also coming into the church now. Jesus said it was going to happen again. Matthew 24, verse 36. And I'll, whoop, how did I manage to lose that? I actually messed up one. First John, uh, let's see if I can catch that by history. Yep, chapter two, bring it back. Here we go. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Do you know what the lust thereof is when it talks about it will pass away? Again, that goes back to Matthew 24. That goes back to what Jesus said was going to happen on the earth in this last day. When he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. That given and given in marriage was that fornication with fallen angels. And remember, these women didn't know it. They appeared as if they were their husbands, but they were not. And they brought about a hybrid race. And do you not know that this earth is filled right now, not just with clones, but even with hybrid races, women that have been taken away against their will. And I know that sounds like conspiracy theories and everything you want to call it. But remember, Jesus said what happened before the flood would happen again. And if you ever read any of the documents from the Dead Sea Scrolls, you will find out those women didn't know what happened. They weren't doing anything intentionally. They basically were raped and brought forth a hybrid generation. And that's what Satan has done in this day. He has brought forth again a hybrid generation to overthrow, to try to kill and to murder every true believer on this earth. You are about to go under a war of a magnitude like you've never seen before. And some of these things we will be discussing over on Patreon on our channel there that I'll share with you there. Listen, I know a lot of what I'm saying to you is very difficult to, 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 to listen to things like that. But we do, we want to thank you for your love and your kindness to this ministry your support of this ministry. And I just want to say, God bless you. I want to ask you, be prepared, be ready. Don't forget also too, I, I haven't talked about it in a little bit there, but the EMP shield, we have got some weather changes that are coming. It looks like they, have, they got another sale going on. So I just, I'm glad that I see that. Uh, all kinds of discounts, depending on how many devices you buy. I'm not trying to get you to buy a bunch of them. I think mainly for your home. For your vehicle. Those are the two main ones. If you're into these radios and stuff, maybe you need an extra one for that. Maybe you don't. Maybe if it's on your home, maybe it protects your radio. I don't know. I, I'm not here to say I, I would think it would anyway. So I'm not 
don't want you to just go out and buy a bunch of stuff you don't have a need of. But even like for your home, if you were to get the get the device that you need for your home because these plasma lightning storms coming, my desire and hope is that these would actually help you. So just add it to your cart. And, uh, you know, when you do it, though, the reason, the reason I show you this is so you get the extra discount because you get an extra discount um, when you put in INL50 as your code. Now, see, they just gave a discount for purchasing the one. So if I apply that coupon code of INL50, it's going to knock $50 off. So it's a way to save money with their sale that they got going on as well. And when you scroll down, you can see, yeah, you went down to $319 instead of uh, $409. All right. So just reminding you of that there, if God lays it on your heart to support the ministry here, please do. The Noon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee. That's right there on your right-hand side of your screen. You can also donate online by just clicking that button there. It'll take you to a PayPal link, but you can use any card, debit card, credit card, if you were just to click on that. But you got to put in uh, your, your donation first, the amount that you want to donate, you know, whether it be $5, $100, whatever the case may be. Um, and then you can do it as a monthly donation if you wanted to. And then you just fill in your information. We really appreciate it. Uh, also, I am desperately needing to do something on this procedure for my for my back. Um, uh, I'm not quite where I need to be to be able to do that. It's a very expensive procedure. and uh, But I'm, of course, very concerned about the situation, how things are changing right now and getting this done. But if you want to help contribute for that, you can do so, whether you do it through the through our our, our online donating or by our, by our, our uh, mailing address. We appreciate it. There's been several people that have been kind enough to help do that. Um, it is in the thousands to do the procedure. And I do, unfortunately, seems week after week, things are getting worse. And I've lost a lot of feeling in both feet now. And, um, and doctors have told me if I don't do something soon, I may not be walking much longer. So I, I appreciate you and appreciate your love and concern for me. Those that have been writing uh, and, and your prayers, I, I very much covet them. And uh, But anyway, God's blessing on you. I know many people are suffering right now. Many people have lost jobs as well because of this um, not willing to get this thing stuck in their arm. And uh, so we're praying for you as well. Thank you. Thank you for your, your prayers and love and your support. God.